and you <laughs> talked about a ritual using the element of fire yes. to release crap you don't you know for a fact you don't want back whether it's karma a person a dynamic yes. do you want to get do you want to talk about that a little bit i can and i think it's kind of underused these days because you really can clear stuff but the the caveat to clearing is that it can be very abrupt um, and you have to be careful of the boomerang effect. So like when you clear something, you're letting go of something and you may not understand there was something more emotional to that connection. So hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Unpacking Possibility. I'm your host, Tracy Stein. As always, I'm so happy to be here with you. I am super excited about my guest today. She is none other than Barry Dolnick. Now, if you know me, you've definitely heard that name over the years because Barry is a prolific author an astrologer. I'm going to call her the original executive mystic, way ahead of her time. I'm going to let Barry tell you more about her journey, but I'm excited that she's re-releasing one of the books that I have most frequently recommended to people. But without further ado, Barry, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Very excited. <laughs> I am so excited. I started reading your books, I think, in somewhere in the 1990s. Yeah, I think the first one was out in February of 95, Simple Spells for Love. Yes, and I'm going to make you laugh. I still have. Oh. This is probably um, the fourth copy because I've given them to so many people. I have Simple Spells oh, for Success. Yeah, next year. They do work. They're, they do work. And we're going to talk about that because they've stood the test of time. Oh, right at home. And of course, this one, which has a little bit of a different um, tone and still great. So I, I want you to talk about your journey, because I remember from your books, which, by the way, are so engaging and so readable, and they're things you return to again and again, but your journey from an extremely successful executive, I, I you know, coming a bit out of the broom closet, is that fair to say? If I get it wrong, you tell me. <laughs> I mean, I have, I, I have a a probably a, a unpredictable story, uh, but that is, I think, all of us really, because we all come from we a place we think we know where we're going, but life takes us wherever it takes us. And for me, my life really changed sort of when I studied abroad in London, and I met a girl who became my best friend who's English but lived in New York. And she has been and still is like my little my spiritual partner. And together, we kind of ended up rolling into all of the subject matter. She's a painter, so she went into a different direction. But the reason we opened the door or our Pandora's box was actually doing the Ouija board, but not the not the game. We we would make one with turning a glass over and cutting out letters and, and numbers. And it was insane the kind of energy that would come through. And the messages are, you know, terrible. It's like God is love or F you, you know, whatever. <laughs> nothing, nothing really deep. So we told, I told another friend of mine, a woman I was working with in advertising at the time that we were doing this. And she was like, oh my God, you have to stop. It's so bad. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, you know, I was sort of skeptical. It was just, I didn't really believe it. And then my friend, Julia, who's my, my little partner in crime said, let's try moving furniture. And she was over to dinner one night in my apartment in New York, East 89th street. And literally like a three legged table, but not because that's what I needed for witchy purposes. It was something actually I found on the street, as you did back in those days. And we put our fingertips lightly on it. And my sister was with us. And the table just took off. And it went down a hallway, like without us touching it, it just kept going. And my sister did not sleep for like a month. And we were laughing. Her. I thought that was so <laughs> funny. Well, yeah, it was stupid. It was too stupid. <laughs> but I realized at the time, okay, there's obviously something going on here. Don't really know what it is. And then I was sort of introduced into sort of a world of the metaphysics vibe in New York, which at the time in the 80s was part sort of adjacent to AIDS. And there were a lot of people meditating. We had the harmonic convergence. And I was very lucky to have a teacher called Julie Winter, who still has one class in New York. And she was kind of like the, the hitching post. Like she was the one, the ballast who helped me understand what meditation and visualization. And I would go in my little eighties, like red wool suit, um, you know, in my power suit, jewelry, my giant hair, my share hair at the time, <laughs> red nails. And just like, I have a picture from that time. And I'm just like, I cannot believe I did that. 
<laughs> and I would sit there on the floor holding hands with the rest of the students, many of whom were just low key, you know, with my modesty pillow because my skirt was short. And like I would be closing my eyes and going, ah, and looking around because we were about to chant. But eventually it was like a godsend. It was like home. And what that was doing, I think, was really opening my heart, which I had no idea was separate from my head at the time. Like I was, you know, I think we all go through people processing from birth where your parents tell you what to do and school tells you what to do. And then you get in your 20s and life is like, what? It's, like, I don't, you know, I don't quite understand what this is. Is there other rules? <laughs> you know, when when do I get there? And and I was helped along because I had this like undercurrent of like gradual, deeper understanding and connection at the same time, going to work, flying to my clients in Ralston Purina, reading their tarot cards. And, um, you know, it's funny because people were interested, but it was not my goal. It was kind of fun. Like I never in my life thought I would make it my work. Because you were working in advertising at the time. Is that yeah. correct? And, yeah. and you were really successful. So you were doing work in advertising, but then kind of like covertly offering metaphysical tools. Is that uh, true? Well, it sort of evolved out of the fact that I hated advertising. I mean, after a <laughs> while, because it's a really tough and very cold place. Uh, it's a young people's, you know, industry. So it was great. And I had, I started out on CoverGirl Makeup. It was a really fun account. And, you know, you work with the best models and shoots and it was really cool. And then I worked for Campbell's Soup and I had, I had big clients and I, I was very promotable in part because I just am unfiltered and lucky enough to be smart enough to say the right things at the right time. But I'm not sure I would have gone through to president of an agency because I wasn't going to gulf. But I got to a point where I was like not fed anymore, even though I made a lot of money and people are like, are you crazy? Why would you leave advertising? What? It's such a great job. You're so lucky. And, you know, these things are packaged. It's sort of like influencers now. It looks good from the outside, but what's inside? And I was dying. So the class was kind of the nourishment I needed to to get through the later years in advertising. The class on kind of chanting, moving your energy, metaphysics. Yeah, she calls them healing classes. Um, we would always open a class with the chant. We, there would be, um, she'd read maybe an excerpt of a book um, to think about. We talked about abundance. We talked about time past lives, you know, the malleability of our existence, how we create our world. I mean, it's, these are big topics. And you think about them on your own, you can feel a little nauseous. So it's, it was, she's a really good teacher and she helped me understand it. And my ability is to boil these topics down into kind of chewable form so that everybody can understand it. So like, I'm kind of a bridge between the sort of I will never be considered a philosopher, put it that way. <laughs> Just I'm a yakety yak kind of gal. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, though, because, you know, it's not many, there aren't many books that will stick with me for 30 years almost. Um, and your books have stood the test of time. And I have all kinds of thoughts on that. Sure. You know, when, when I was a kid, I believed in magic. And, you know, there's so much environmental noise telling you that that's not true or, you know, I'm a psychologist, so, oh, it's magical thinking. But I felt like I had observed these things kind of randomly. And then I came across your books. And I think I saw somebody talking about your simple spells for success on Good Day New York in the mid 90s. And yeah. I bought the book. I mean, I think I read it in an hour and I have gone back to it so many times since because what it really did is took something that felt random and also what if it's not real and reaffirmed that, you know what, no, this is, you know, the universe has a kind of consciousness and there is a magic within us and we do, there is some malleability to our path, right? Oh, and totally. you provided such clear tools <laughs> and your rituals, I I'll come back to this later because I don't want to go on and on, but they make sense to me psychologically. You help people reorient to something in a concise and concrete way. Thank you. I mean, I guess I write with my conviction. So I just wrote what I really believe. And it is 
the ancient practices for emotional fulfillment or for abundance. So it's not like these are like new. All I did was try to explain how manifestation works. And I honestly, I think, you know, I don't want to blow my own horn, but I do think I explain manifestation pretty well. And it's a a word thrown around a lot these days, but actual manifestation is basically a co-creation. So when people say I manifest, I always get uncomfortable with that because manifestation is using the energy around you, you asking the universe for what you want, opening your heart to it because it's a heart manifestation. Everything that we get in life comes from here, not here. And I think the book for me gave me a chance to really express how much I believed that we are all connected, that we can have anything we want, that abundance is infinite, that love is infinite, and that as long as you allow that into your beliefs and to know that it will be that, you know, we we create we create our limitations. It's so easy to do that, you know, fear and what you're told. I mean, my favorite thing is how like, oh, we're in a down market. Everybody's going to lose their jobs. I'm like, well, people lose their jobs in up markets and they get jobs in down markets. So that's just baloney. It's just a way of sort of like fury, make people making people fearful and, and try to like make them adhere to a model that we've kind of all agreed on. But isn't it's all money is belief. Stocks are belief. You don't have to believe. And the more people who don't believe, I mean, I'm not saying not to believe in Tinkerbell, but like, you know, believing is what contributes to life and reality. So if you believe that we can have peace, we all will have peace. You know, this is not such a big secret, but um, in in the world of love, a lot of people, I think the rules came out not far after my book, which was the girls who wrote a book about this is how you get a husband and you make yourself hard to get. You can't do it was extremely prescriptive. And I was like, oh, it hurts. Like, I don't want to be married to somebody who isn't shared, like who isn't like my connected person. I don't want to just have a husband. Um, And I had a lot of experience with the wrong people and bad breakups. So I felt like I had a great body of work behind the book. And, um, you know, I wrote what I knew. And while I was writing that book, I had not yet met my husband. So that Simple Spells for Love actually helped me manifest the person I married and still am with. And we have a baby, well, 26 year old now, but it, it was more than I could have ever imagined. And in a million years, I would never have chosen to marry a neuroscientist. <laughs> but it works. Each, each other's yin and yang, right? That complementarity there coming from well, different worlds, but being well, complementary. Uh, yeah, we're told, well, we've definitely that kind of couple, not the same, but very, bring different things. But when we first met and we knew that we really were going to be together, my husband's Austrian. And when he said to me, I, I, you know, I want to, you know, make this real and I want to marry you, but I don't know how to tell people when I get hired for a job, they always say, is your wife a scientist? Does she need a job? And I don't, I'm going to have to say my wife is a witch. And like, <laughs> first of all, I'm not a witch. <laughs> <laughs> like he was very nervous about having somebody as extremely, you know, out there with this, that, um, but of course, over time, it just, you know, it just calmed down. And as he says, everybody wants to know about themselves. So I've done charts and cards for Nobel prize winners and people, you know, bankers, scientists, everybody, you know, everybody. no one's except. <laughs> so I think, starting there is great with simple spells for love and i i have to say that i think that is the book i have most often recommended to people simple spells for love you were so ahead of your time and i have to tell you like the whole quote rules like i had the same negative reaction because it sounded like you had to pretend to be somebody you're not to like catch somebody or you know trick them into being with you your yeah your book you went over things that were so fundamental and again, psychologically sound in, in digestible bite size, um, meaningful pieces. So clearing the path to love so important. And I can't tell you how many people I've had to say, listen, 
You can't attract the right person if you don't let go of some of the old ideas about yourself and other people and the old kind of automatic dramas. But yeah. this, the, rit, the rituals are so psychologically powerful. And I tell people, even if you don't believe this is harnessing the energy of the universe, it doesn't matter because you're shifting something inside of you. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I couldn't put it better. I don't think you have to s believe, but I think a tiny little like, well, what do I, you know, you don't know everything. So just like this is part of what you don't know, you don't know. And if you a ritual, it does signal to your unconscious for sure that you are deliberately taking steps to be open to and attract somebody in your life who is a true heart connection. And my most important thing of equal power. So then you have somebody who is, however, whoever they are, complimentary and grows with you uh, and has, you know, a connection to you that isn't necessarily just here because it's great right. to talk and have banter, but you have to have that magnetism that, that draws you to each other where you just know in your soul that that's right. There's no question. So I tell my daughter, actually, like, you know, when you know, when you're with that person, when you just don't even think about it. It's like, you don't go, oh, I don't know anything. You're just like, that's my person. So true. So true. And, you know, other things that you say in that book that, again, it, it just like sometimes people are like, they feel like, oh, I just, I could have had a V8. It's like that head <laughs> smacking moment. Like, oh, why didn't I realize that? Duh. But, you know, the person, there's the person you think you want but focus yes. very clearly on what it is you want, the qualities, and kind of trust the universe to send you the right person who might be different from what you're thinking of. And you, you know, your spells talk about that with whether it's a job, a home, and so forth. It's very much describing the feeling you want from it. And the, so the person will bring you humor, warmth, understanding, um, excitement, adventure, love, uh, creativity, fertility, whatever, you know, babies, whatever it is that you want in a partner, but it, it's described without physical attributes and even without timing, because you have to give it over to, you know, it takes a little while for it to kind of fall into place. And the same with abundance, job, jobs, job losses, everything is cyclical. And we get very, very worried when things seem on the down because we, we are really worried about, is it ever going to go up? But it's always going up and down. Everything is always cyclical. You go through times where you don't have anybody in your life. You think you're never going to have a boyfriend or a partner. And suddenly it just changes in a day. And it's all about faith. It just comes down to faith. You have things in your books. This is more simple spells for success, but, you know, Casting a glamour, I thought, was so interesting. And I've tested this out. And I'm relating it to what you're saying about everything has an upswing because sometimes you need to put yourself out there before you feel like you're in the upswing, whether it's getting a job or meeting a partner or giving a presentation or whatever it is. I have tested this out where I have <laughs> everybody's gonna listening is gonna be like, really? But it's true. <laughs> like, you know, getting dressed up for a party and putting it out there like you know, if I didn't feel particularly like I looked that great, but like casting the glamour of like feeling beautiful or someone is going to tell me how great I look tonight because I've, you know, if I put on the nice earrings or whatever, um, and that might sound small, but when we don't feel in the space we want to be in about who we are, it's so much harder to attract what we want. So something, something simple like, you know, putting on the glamour of speaking well when you're giving a talk or being confident when you go to that job interview. Um, and that is a thread through all of your books. Uh, yes, I think uh, I think it always kind of comes back to the belief in yourself and also the possibility that you can have what you want. So you're telling yourself, even if you have a low self-esteem day or moment, you can do I suppose it's psychological too a self suggestion a absolutely where you believe like you just tell yourself it's fine and then my prescription I think is more like weaving the energy around you so that you have a filter and that people see what you want them to see 
And it, it makes you feel more secure because you feel like you're being protected. I think that you do bring that to to every every day in life. If you remember, I mean, I don't remember to do this. I wish I did. Because I mean, <laughs> no it's, a, it's my husband's always saying, don't you read your own books? Because it's really hard to live in that space when you're surrounded by people and a world that does not have any room for that. So it takes commitment and it also just takes, I mean, self-interest, which is great because you, you want to have what you want to have and there's no reason you shouldn't have it. And it, we do get really caught up in like, well, I'm not going to get that because they said, if, you know, I'm over 40 and I'll never meet anybody or I'll never have a baby or, and all that nonsense. And there's exceptions to everything and you can have what you want. And the most important thing to attach to what you want is the fulfillment of your heart. Like that makes you happy. That brings you love. It's not checking a list off to say like my bank account or anything like that. That will come because when you're in a good place, things come to you. So um, I think we just forget that we can. And it's also like fine to be selfish for goodness sakes. Have what you want. Abundance is infinite, which is such a hard thing to understand because we have a distribution problem in the world, but we have plenty to go around. So there's no reason not to have what you want and how much of what you want. I'm not saying wealth is helpful because just having wealth is just sitting or it's not really doing anything, but you can be in abundance. You can have the place you want to live. You can have the life you want to have. And generally that doesn't have a lot to do with money. Of course you need money to have it, but it's not about having pots and pots of money that doesn't buy health. That doesn't buy like love. It just gives a certain amount of security maybe but you can be in abundance where you have everything you want and you just think like, wow, I'm so lucky. It's so true. And and I really, again, I think you were so ahead of your time talking about this because like you said before, earlier um, when we started speaking, manifesting is such a hot topic. I think it can be a bit overused, but but it's important. Everybody wants to bring in something that feels a bit out of reach in the moment and that's okay. What I love about your books is they're these bite-sized rituals, these anecdotes, and these explanations about getting clear on your intention. Because if you don't know what you really want, you'll keep attracting stuff you don't. And I love how, you know, you've kind of referenced, and, I, and I've said this to patients many times, like, if you are so entranced by what you fear and what you don't want... It's like it's like casting a spell almost for yeah. the crap you don't want. Or if you think you're not entitled to something and you're doing all this manifesting work, that's what you're going to get. And, and I've had that experience. I've spoken about that on the podcast before, like house hunting. My husband and I have definitely done your spells to find a space and they've worked. And, they, and you know, there's been a bit of a sense of humor well, I just want to tell you, one time we were really looking for a new apartment and we wanted a double door entry for some reason. That seemed stately to us. And so we got two doors to the apartment, which is unusual, two outside doors, but they weren't together. We were kind of laughing. But we got all this other stuff on our... They like, do oh, like adjacent doors. Yeah. <laughs> but we got all these other things on our checklist time yeah. and again that it, we would have said were impossible. Exactly. And, and everything's yeah. possible. I think that the yeah. intention that you were talking about earlier is really key because the intention is what comes from the heart. And this is when manifesting gets that sort of murkiness of people say, I manifested this, I manifested that. It's like the point of manifestation is to feel what it to feel what it is you want to manifest. I want to have a, a, a an apartment that has all the stuff the way I want it. And that's what I want. And I feel it in my heart. Like it's not like I want it because I want other people to envy me. It's where I want to live and I want to make this my home. And then allowing and the allowing part is really hard because that's where you're like, when's this happening? And it, the bigger the the wish, the longer it can take. So, it, you know, it took me quite a while to manifest a partner. And I would say attract is probably a better word for that. But it took a while for him to grow up. He's five years younger than me. So <laughs> it wasn't going to happen for a while. But it's, but that kind of attraction, I feel like it's kind of like putting out like, um, I don't know if it's cord is really the right thing, but an invitation, an energetic invitation 
and allowing that person to move into your sphere kind of. I think every ritual you do with that clear intention and with the part of it that allows it to try a few times, you get a few like false leads in the beginning. Um, That is your connection to the universe. That is the connection to the creative unconscious. And when you are engaging with energy that's not just in your limited knowledge, it's so much bigger and you get so much more because you're like, well, I want all this. Like, this is like, like a, like a house as an office for me and for my husband. I'd like this, that, that. I'd like it to be safe in a pretty neighborhood. I'd like da, 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 under this amount of money, like have at it. And the ritual part of it, I have to say at the time, it was very important to follow those rituals because they, all the rituals have air, earth, water, and fire elements. And that is the meant that represents reality. And now our energy, the, the world has changed a lot. And energetically, you don't have to be as strict with them. Um, it's much easier to pull things in. Now, it's really easy to get the wrong things too. So let's not get Absolutely. Um, but it is, I just want to say, if anybody picks up one of these books, it's like, well, on the fourth hour of darkness, on the Thursday of a waxy moon, and it can get very specific. I would just say stay with the moon t- waxing or waning, which is getting yes. bigger, bigger and smaller. And after dark, because the reason everything is after sunset is because your imagination is much bigger in the dark. When you see reality in front of you, the hard edges of your world, it's hard to believe that it's possible to have beyond that. 100%. I'm going to make you laugh because I haven't opened this book in a while but it, I have it open to find a location. <laughs> I'm sitting, by the way, in a house that was impossible on paper. That person did not want to sell. The market is horrendous. This person had every reason to stay in this location because their contract isn't up for a few years. To make a long story short, I'm giving you credit. So thank oh, you. I'm so happy for you, though. I mean, it's great. You should take the credit. You're the one who did it. <laughs> Thank you. I will take most of the credit, but I have to give you some. Can I read the spell so people have a sense of what? So in your book, and we're going to start with simple spells for success, but I'm going to go to the uh, love as well. So this is a spell to find a location. And it goes like this. On a Sunday during a waxing moon, waxing because you want to manifest, bring something and increase, right? So on a Sunday during a waxing moon and in the fourth hour of darkness, light a green candle and an orange candle. Next to the candles, place a vase with your favorite flowers. Place an onion, carrot, or potato next to the flowers. Make a list of all the aspects you want in your location. Atmosphere, security, convenience, cost, size. Say aloud, I call in the elements and the power of the universe to join with me in attracting the right location for my needs. I participate in this process with trust and action. And then you say, close your eyes, visualize your location, breathe it, feel it, be in it, read your list aloud, And then say aloud, within the right action, I ask that this be done. So be it. And so it is. Getting chills. (laughs) You say to let the candles burn as long as you like. Use the root vegetable in cooking before the full moon. And I wanted to read that because it is much more simple than people realize to take five or ten minutes and recenter. I wanted to point out the mundane part that you emphasize as well. You're not saying do the spell and then sit around hoping the house falls into your lap or the job or the partner. You talk about the mundane parts that we have to do. Oh, my God. I gave up. I mean, also, I didn't have a touchdown surrender because I think the story I put in there was um, trying to manifest a one bedroom apartment on near green space, um, under $900 a month, it's a while ago, um, and surrounded by beauty with an elevator. I didn't didn't walk up. I was exhausted, like tired of tripping over my coat going up the walk up. And um, I I was all like, brokers would always show you like it's 2000 a month and it's a tiny studio, you know? And I was looking for under 900 and a one bedroom with an elevator. And they all laughed at me, but I went through this and I was like, 
uh, you know, I was like, I am just gonna have to give up and just stay and renew my lease in this. And then I was walking up, um, I guess it's Union Square East. And um, there was a building that said elevator building. You know, they used to have the ads like painted on the building and it said elevator building. And I was like, oh, I might as well just, you know, whatever. I'll just ring the doorbell. You're supposed to like ask if the super's there. So I go in and I hit the, bo- the, the bell for the super. And behind me, the guy goes, what do you want? <laughs> and it was him. <laughs> and I was like, well, is there a, um, I'm just looking to see if there are any apartments in the building. He's like, well, there, there might be. What are you looking for? And I said, a one bedroom. And I was like, oh, I, there might be a one bedroom, but it's kind of expensive. And it's on the second floor. And I said, oh, um, well, can I, I would love to. And he's like, I can show it to you. I think they're home. They probably don't mind. I go in. It's huge. It's like a 900 square foot one bedroom. And I was like, uh, can I put an application? They were moving upstairs to a two bedroom. And um, I, I got that apartment. And when I, I said, is it expensive? He's like, well, it's expensive. But I'm like, is it like more than a thousand? Like, what was it? And the rent was eight ninety nine fifty three. So, I mean, that was hilarious. And then I had said surrounded by beauty. And I opened up the blinds and there's a huge building painted beauty school. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone now, but it was, I mean, I was just like, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And that was like, that's it. This works. I know it works. <laughs> it was before I I've actually met my husband. So my simple spouse, well, I hadn't really kicked in, yet, but I was so shocked. It was great. No, the universe has a sense of humor and, and what an incredible story. You actually got better than you thought you could get. And that is so important. I just put in like exactly what I said, like this, what I felt, the space, like the, how I wanted it to be, like just every, just, it was exactly, had nice wood floors. It was so cozy. You know, it was, it was an amazing location. And I'm not, you know, saying that you could do that today. I think New York's a different place. Anyway. Maybe you could. Yes. You may. Weirder be. things have happened. <laughs> but people also want different things these days. And I'm not even sure that somebody that young would want to be in that area anymore. But at any rate, it works. And I was, I also believe in something called metaphysical beginner's luck, which is the first time you try something, boom, you get it. And that's, that draws you in, right? So then you're going to do it again, but it doesn't always work as fast. Absolutely. I want to, we will get to Simple Spells for Love, because again, I think that's going to be something that people are so excited about that you're re-releasing. So the executive mystic, I have to tell you how helpful this was. Um, I love that between that and simple spells for success, you talk about the reality of working with toxic people. I still remember your story about the pink tourmaline. (laughs) You're welcome to tell that story if you want. It's up to you about giving somebody a pink tourmaline for a toxic to deal with a toxic or you gave a toxic boss pink tourmaline. And it crumbled in his pocket. That one. (laughs) Yes. I mean, the person was so toxic that they... If the crystal committed suicide. <laughs> oh, my God. It just, you know, but you talk about using herbs. You talk about using um, oils, colors, mirrors gems. Well. Uh, mirrors yes. are very helpful because you can reflect. If you have a mirror, like, behind you or on your desk facing out, it reflects that, like, anybody's toxic energy back out. And um, I used a lot of um, onyx and just dark, the hematite, anything that would ground. Um, And also, I always, always tell people to wear silk um, undershirts or something silk um, over their heart or cross your arms over your solar plexus when you're around toxic people because that's your power center and that's where the toxicity comes in. So, of course, you get a stomach ache at work or indigestion or something, and it comes from there. So I'm thinking back, I won't name the place, not that I think they'll be listening to my podcast. (laughs) This probably isn't their bag. Um, But I'm going to say 25 years ago, maybe, I I was working in such a toxic place. And there's been more than one, but I, I did get the little compact mirror because I can't tell you the toxicity. I mean, you know, when everybody's unhappy or there are times when people, groups of people leave, it's never a good sign. But I felt like I needed to stay there for my career. And, but literally, I think it was, I felt like it was making me sick. 
Um, and I remember having to go into these meetings in these big conference rooms and and going in a few minutes early and dropping like lavender oil into the carpet <laughs> to calm everybody down <laughs> or having uh, rosemary in my pocket, yeah. you know, for some courage um, and my stones. And, and I think some of the people who actually knew I did this got a kick out of it. I don't know if they took it so seriously, but it doesn't matter. It was for you, not them. Absolutely. I can't even my shower. Oh, I can, was, no, 100%. Talk about that. Every day. Well, sea salt is just one of the things you can do to, to clear yourself. So, and it's a great scrub. <laughs> so <you> just, <laughs> I always had sea salt in my shower and I would make sure you don't have to buy Gwenny's goops like Himalayan sea salt hair scrub. You can just take a little sea salt and put it on the crown chakra and that will actually, you know, clear that out. But I would make sure I put it on all my chakras and it really does lift. It's like, it is like swimming in the sea, but obviously we can't all jump in the ocean. Yeah, but it's so true. These simple things. And again, they're psychologically powerful. They remind us to orient our awareness in a different way, like symbolically on a deeper level, release crap that we do not need, I also including think people. You're allowing yourself to feel powerful by, you're not just subjugated. You can take steps that you be, you can believe. You know, I have a coaster that's like a a crystal of some sort, and um, I always keep it because it's blue, which is good for clarity and communication. But I have it left over from advertising days because I just wanted something that gave me a sense of con not control, but just like participating in my own defense or my own power. And, and those are the, those are the cues that you're telling yourself. So if you're a complete non-believer, a lot of this stuff is just telling your unconscious that you can have what you want, you know, and if you don't want to believe that you're connecting to the universe, or creativity around you, you could just say, well, I'm just getting out of my own way. But I believe, I know that you are actually opening to a huge amount of power available to you. And that when you're in the situations at work where things really suck and when somebody's really being difficult that is are we allowed to swear i think so <laughs> okay i just want to make sure because this was not it's not my phrase it's my teacher's phrase which i think is great but she used the phrase it's a fucking growth opportunity so it's like a really sucky situation but it teaches you how to deal with something and it generally unlocks some kind of toxic stickiness from karma or from your family or something and it heals a lot so Absolutely. It, as hard as it is, it's so good. So if you have little things that help you through that stuff, why not? 100%. Again, so many things in your books that have stuck with me. I remember there was, I can't read, I think it might have been in the Executive Mystic. I can't remember for sure, but you said something about never burn bridges. And then again, never say never. And you <laughs> talked about a ritual using the element of fire. Yes. To release crap you don't, you know for a fact you don't want back, whether it's karma, a person, a dynamic. Yes. Do you want to get, do you want to talk about that a little bit? I can't. And I think it's kind of underused these days because you really can clear stuff. But the, the caveat to clearing is that it can be very abrupt. Um, and you have to be careful of the boomerang effect. So, like when you clear something, you're letting go of something and you may not understand there was something more emotional to that connection. And then you end up crying for a week because you're, it's gone but you didn't know that there was something there. But what I used to do and with my, my little cohort of friends, we would take um, different colored thread that would represent different things. So if I was trying to clear in my love life, I'd use pink thread. At work, I would use blue or green. If I had pounds with money, then I would use yellow or gold. And you can just, you have a candle and you just like say, I release. And then thread is very sensitive to, to fire and it just sizzles right up. And you just throw the rest out, but you're releasing. Um, it also represents kind of the strand of fear or, or, or hurt that you're holding on to and you're letting it go. And you have to be able to really let go because people like to hold on to certain things, in particular anger. So oh, yeah. um, anger is what brings people closer bless people because when you bless them, they float away and then hopefully they get their lessons somewhere else. Um, but the thread is for your own clearing. And it also is very, you can very, you can focus on a broad subject or a small subject. 
generally during a waning moon. And also just say the word gentle when you're releasing. I release this gently, I release this gently, I release this gently because you can get a real shock. Like it can just go. I wouldn't want to release like a job that fast. That's such a good point because I think when things feel intolerable, we just want to yeah. right away. And there's a better way to do it possibly. Gently. <laughs> gently, gently, absolutely. Right action. You know, there are these words that you can say, right action for the greater good. Anything so that you're basically not hurting anybody else and yourself. It's so important. The present tense is incredibly important when you talk about stuff like this. And that's why all the spells are in the present tense. It's always like, I affirm I do this, not that I will do this, because you are stating this is happening. This is not just possibility, but it's in existence in an energetic form. And I'm going to manifest this in reality. Well said, like affirming and accepting it in the now. Yes. And time is elastic. And I do think I talk about that in the executive mystic where time is kind of per a perception. You do. And, and talk a little bit about that. Cause I think, I don't remember if it was like a specific ritual or just the idea of stretching time you're running late for something and stretching time it was it, it was it was more anecdotal about stretch it's about stretching time and how like when you're in a class and you're watching the clock and time goes really slowly but you're having fun and time goes really fast that's like that's real like time does fly you know it accelerates from after the long month of january and the sort of sort of long month of february we hit march and it flies to the point where it's christmas tomorrow and that is real. If you perceive that time is elastic and you understand that time is, first of all, baloney. We made it up to understand like the cycles of the year and the days and the sun going up and down. But time is itself is infinite. Like the, the universe is infinite. Time is infinite. And that's something we can't perceive. So jumping into sort of the unknowable part of it, time is elastic. So we can say, uh, I'm running so late. I'm stretching time. I know I arrive on time. And uh, many times you will arrive on time because you're just telling time to give you the space to get there. I think it probably has some tie in with relativity and Einstein, but I'm not going to go there. Not my purview. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my area of expertise either. But I remember reading that, what you were just talking about. And I remember being like stuck in traffic or something. And yep imagining time being like this elongated container, not that other people have to imagine it this way, and almost like stretching out so that I could move, you know, I would have more time to move forward to get yeah. to my destination. And I, I, it has worked. So I 100% am glad that you mentioned that because it sounds so out there and yet it is true. Um, and As people have a lot of time anxiety right now because we oh, all yeah. feel like we're running out of time. But I know there's there's enough time for everything and that we are exactly where we're meant to be. Totally true. So I want to kind of shift a little bit to Simple Spells for Love because I want to make sure we give this its due. I want to tell you this is the book that, again, I have most often recommended to people. I have recommended it to people I like. I have recommended it <laughs> even to people I didn't like because <laughs> who, who couldn't benefit from more love in their life and self-love? Tell me about re-releasing this book or anything you want to share about Simple Spells for Love. Well, I guess I have seen a lot of need for it because, again, as I say, going back to the heart and like feeling that you're not limited or shut off from what it is you want. It's really important to feel and go through life heart first. It's really trying to empower the reader and to give them the tools to attract what they want and to understand that they are attractive. And as I think you started with clearing the path to love and also knowing that you are more than worthy of love. You, you are a loving person who has every power in the world to be fulfilled in your heart's desire. You have a lot of agency in your own love life. It isn't about other people looking at your picture and not swiping on you or deciding whether or not you're worthy. It's up to you to go out and like have a little buffet table or a little dessert table, take a little bit of everything, see what you like, back what you don't. And just like 
be playful. It's love is meant to be pleasurable and playful. In astrology, it's it's the fifth house of fun. You know, it's not the tenth house of work. It's you're really it's not accomplishment. It is playfulness. And so spells are meant to be playful. And I'm not trying to be like a Bible or a prescriptive person, but I really want people to know that they have the absolute right and power to manifest love, to let go of the stinkers in the past, to forgive the most important thing. I mean, honestly, I do believe your whole purpose in life is to love, to forgive, to evolve as much as we can grow in love. And, you know, and in that forgiveness, you're making me think like forgiveness of the self as well, forgiving and letting go of the people who have not been the greatest partners, because like you said earlier, we learn from every experience, including the difficult ones, but forgiving yourself for maybe having things to learn rather than beating yourself up. I'm going to look for a spell in here. Is there one you think I should, interestingly... I just, I swear to you, and I know you'll get this. A little I bit just, of novelty, you just turn to the right I page. just, I literally <laughs> just opened to the spell for healing and forgiveness. And I don't think I've done that. Should I read it? Sure. I think it's, it's good. Because I want people to get a, a feel for this. So spell for healing and forgiveness. On a Friday during a waning moon, waning being releasing, as you mentioned before, in the fifth hour of darkness, light a white candle and a pink candle. Burn incense of cedar, sandalwood, or cinnamon. Place some lavender in a glass of water before the candles. Say aloud, I gather the powers of the elements to create the space for healing and forgiveness in my relationship with, and name the person. I claim my accountability and my compassion. I affirm that the highest power embraces us all. This is done within the greater good and with love. I say, so be it and so it is. Splash water on the palms of each hand, on your face, and on your heart center. Blow the candles out and let the incense burn out. And then throw the lavender out when the moon is new. It doesn't have to be like like flashing lights and fires and burning pictures. Or anything. It can really just be, you know, a very gentle release. I mean, forgiving someone else, but forgiving yourself is much harder. But forgiving someone else is really just opening your heart and saying like we you can have a spectrum of experience in your life you can have great times bad times angry times sad times like loss and it all exists in the same place and in same with forgiveness you can be hurt but forgive and forgiveness just gives a lot more room for love because you're not taking up a bunch of like energy for like hate or holding on to something forgiving yourself i think i did there might have been i think in that one the ritual where you imagine yourself coming towards you in a meditation and um, you embrace yourself in meditation and say, I forgive you. And honestly, that is that usually makes people cry because forgiving yourself releases so much. We walk around with so much. I mean, shoulda, coulda, woulda. And honestly, I hate that. when people say, oh, what if this and I should have done that? I'm like, don't stop. You're in the moment now. All you have is what's forward. Like there's, this is such a waste of time regret, but if something's sticking, forgive yourself for it. Let it go. Give it peace. Understand that somewhere it's informing your future and that you're carrying with you some wisdom that you have from it, even if it's not obvious. And you got to, like you said before, you got to clear that stuff out. You got to allow yourself to release all of that before you can, you have to have room for the stuff you want to bring in, including new love and healthy love. Yes. I mean, you can't clear all of it, but you clear as much as you right. can. So that, <laughs> yes. you know, We're only know. human. <laughs> um, I want to, this is sort of adjacent, but sort Please. of related. I just want to yeah. say that I have a big problem with the word mindfulness. And I don't know if this is okay. going to step on your toes, but not at all. When mindfulness got into sort of the consciousness, um, Oxford set up a mindfulness Institute and did an MRI scan of somebody who was doing mindfulness and did all this physiological measurement and found like, yes, you calm down and it has good effects on your health, blah, blah, blah. And mindfulness boomed and it made me nuts. Now, have I forgiven this? Probably not. (laughs) It doesn't sound like it, but I think that they miss the heart. So meditation is mindfulness, but it opens your heart while you're doing mindfulness. So you connect your heart to the greater energy of the world, whatever that is to you. 
And it makes an enormous difference in any meditation, any mindfulness you do. Uh, the mindful part is just your head. The meditation part is your heart. And if you can do go through mindfulness, do whatever you want, but make sure you open your heart and just send out love, let, receive love, do whatever you want with your heart, but make sure it's on because that's what increases your power. It's not just physical. It really increases your like ability to manifest you know, I feel like this mindfulness talks about the mind and your mind is not helpful when it comes to manifestation because your mind will be like, you want this, but you can't have it, but you can have it, but you can't like, it's always doing two things at once because it, it doesn't have the heart, which is like, oh, I yearn for this. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you said before, when you want to attract love, like stepping into the feeling yes, of being feel. loved, of being safe, of being in something mutually respectful of being happy and joyful. And yeah. um, that's so much more powerful than having this intellectualized list. And also I should just like, I did co-write a book on how to write a love letter and I am not a romantic type. As you can tell by the way I speak, I, my simple spells for love is really isn't kind of like, you know, Oh, soft lit, quiet whispers. Like it's, it's, it's informative and it's, it's prescriptive a little bit and it, and it kind of guides you through in things. a good way, a highly practical person. <laughs> That's the middle ground to me. It's like, you can be, you can have a sense of irony. You can be cynical, you can be hard boiled, but you can still do rituals for love. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Uh, it, Barry, is there anything that I should have asked you that I did not, that you want us to talk about? Um, I no, I don't think so. I mean, I, it's a real pleasure to talk. I mean, you're, I really appreciate the time you've taken to even look at the books again and um, and to talk to me because uh, I can talk forever and I probably will. <laughs> Thank you. I am very, I'm very happy that um, you've given this some light and energy. Uh, you know, I've been doing it behind the scenes for literally – almost three decades so and and i and i mean it in the most heartfelt way i was super excited when you responded to my email <laughs> i didn't think i was some weird stalker <laughs> i was very flattered and i really appreciate it and i'm i'm looking forward to um other like people i know listening to it and turning them on to you and you know thank you abundance and prosperity have as much uh, as you want. <laughs> absolutely so when is Simple Spells for Success officially being re-released? Um, it's already available, but I haven't done any like announcement of it because okay. it's it's out there already. It's on Amazon, it's in Kindle and um, paperback. Wonderful. Is the best website for you barrydolnick.com? Yeah. You know, I think the only last thing I wanted to say is that, again, I think it's uncanny how ahead of your time you have been because... Like as somebody who does a lot of hypnosis, I see how useful your rituals are and your way of describing things and these beautiful anecdotes in your books for changing something at a deeper level and getting out of our own way. So I want to say thank you again. This has been another episode of Unpacking Possibility. If you enjoyed the episode, please remember to like, share, and follow. It really helps me continue bringing more great content to you. And as always, until next time, be well. Thank you.